the Choctahatchee River flows all the way from Alabama, spanning some 170 miles, making it one of the longest rivers in Florida. The river has a large basin that covers approximately 5,350 square miles, including Choctahatchee Bay and even parts of the southernmost portions of the Appalachian Mountains. It's a significant source of freshwater for this region, feeding into Choctahatchee Bay and ultimately flowing out into the Gulf of Mexico. The Choctaw Nation were some of the first people to inhabit this area, and the name Choctahatchee roughly translates to River of the Choctaws. Even today, the Muskegee Nation of Florida still embraces the Choctahatchee Riverbanks as their rightful home. A hundred years ago, the Choctahatchee River was vital to this region's economy, supporting industries such as logging, turpentine harvesting, and fishing. Today, the vast undeveloped river basin is ideal for boating, fishing, hunting, and wildlife expeditions. This is Captain Andy Coleman. Captain Andy's been exploring and fishing this complex network of tributaries for 50 years. His company, Backwater Tours, specializes in introducing this special place to locals and visitors alike. Today, he's taking us to a very special place indeed, hidden far upriver. Strangely though, the best part of your voyage with Captain Andy might not even be the final destination but the many colorful stories that you'll no doubt hear along the way. I moved here in 1976. I came up on a river, the Wando River, just north of Charleston, South Carolina, and I always felt like I needed to be around a river. A lake won't quite do it for me. I want to be, you know, I want to be able to sail around the world. Now, I'm probably not going to do it, but I want to have that ability. If you go up to the northern cities, 10 and 15, 20 story skyscrapers in 1900, they used wooden water tanks on top of them for the cooling and the water. And they were made out of deadhead cypress or first growth cypress from here. The old culture on this, on this river was to supply those boards for repairing that. Now Alton and I got into it. His nickname was Swamp Bunny, so he knew the river pretty damn good and I bought brands from the heirs to the timber company. Some rivers I had all the brands. We did historical restoration. We made tongue and groove floors. We did some of the first houses built in Rosemary Beach. We did all right with that. Everybody down here says, you know, you want to be like it was in the old days and this, that, and the other. Well, um, when I got here, and I'm a pretty good fisherman, and a man just about couldn't catch a 13-inch trout. Mullet fishermen would swing a thousand yards of seine net out several times a day, and they'd catch all the mullet and all the bycats. They were making a living like that, so they hated the net man, but it sure helped the fish, and then they'd get a dollar and a half a pound for mullet instead of you know, instead of 15 cents. That river has cleared up a lot since when I first came here. When it would rain up around Hartford, Alabama, close to Dothan in there, all that red clay would come down the rivers and the, and the bay, the old people would say, looks like you can plow the bay, it looks so red and muddy. A lot of that's been um, mitigated now. There's more paved roads, there's no straight dumping into the river, and the river has improved greatly. There's wildlife here, a lot of it. Bears, alligators, deer, bald eagles, osprey, bobcats, otters, and even endangered species such as the prehistoric looking gulf sturgeon. When I was first here, you didn't see sturgeon. And uh, 
then we started putting up signs that sturgeon are endangered species. And they got so plentiful, they went from endangered species to a ha hazarded navigation in a year. The biggest alligator I've ever seen was killed by another alligator. That was big. I don't know whether it's just a tougher alligator or not, but the biggest one I ever seen had a hundred pound chunk of meat cut out of his back. That was pretty, that scared me and I wasn't there close to when it happened. Um, one time, Houghton and I were going down the river and Houghton had me run in the boat, a little 12 foot wooden boat out of First Grove Cypress, it was a nice damn boat. A little 15 horse motor and, and uh, we going down the river and there's a mink, a mink swimming in the river. And out and said, you ever looked at one close up? And I said, well, I know, out and I have not looked at a mink close up. He said, well, run me over there. And I got this dip net, which is kind of like for brim and bass. And that mink came out of the net like a wombat. It looked like a mongoose biting out. And them, they got super sharp teeth and they puncture them, bam, bam, bam. He's screaming and hollering, help me, Andy, help me. I said, one of us has got to not bleed, you know, because he's bleeding pretty bad. I think I'm going to let you take care of that damn mink, and I'll sit back in and run the motor. So anyhow, the um, moral of that story is uh, it takes you a lot longer to release a mink than it does to catch him. So don't mess with minks. They don't need, need our mess. You are likely to witness a variety of creatures and critters on this heart of darkness-like journey up the winding river, with each turn revealing a new story from Choctahatchee's past. There was a doctor over across the intercoastal with a big house at the end of the bay. We come up there, how you doing doc? And he said, oh, I got this stuff figured out. Out in the detail. And he said, yeah, I'm gonna get me some goats and have them clear all this brush so I can see the topography of my land and see how I should develop it. He buys them. Best we could tell, 300 goats and turns them loose over there by Bunker Cove. He did not figure in the alligator population. And uh, we went back in there and uh, out, in the, out and said it was worse than Vietnam and he'd been to Vietnam. And there were goat hides and goat heads and goat skulls everywhere. As Alton said, it, ma it was a massacre. And uh, so we always called it the Great Goat Massacre. And I've always figured that they had to call their cousin alligators from up the, up the river to come down there and feast on those goats. And um, I believe in that lower chalk the hatchet tribe has a, has a spiritual program of uh, that's when uh, the Lord fed, fed them goats falling from heaven and they had a, a big festival and they were the special alligators chosen by God to get real fat and big. And that's my story and uh, I'm pretty well sticking to it. As I said, this is a pretty wild place, but Assuming you survive your epic journey churning up river, there is a reward. And, well, it's a jaw dropper. Choctahatchee River is just one more extraordinary Walton County treasure, explored by so few, but appreciated by all that do. We had logged all year and um, we sitting, it's, it's drizzling rain, and we sitting around a pot belly stove, and this woman, I, I said, out and said, I'm gonna show you something. I said, I, I, I don't wanna see nothing. I wanna stay right here, because it's warm, and it's cold out there, and it's drizzling rain. And that river's in the flood. It's, um, but anyhow, we got in there, and every animal that was on that 6,500 acre island that didn't swim to the other side of the river was on top of that atoll. There were big feral hogs. There were deer. There were, um, there's one old scraggly bear, 
bunch of raccoons, bunch of otters. We started watching them, and it's really, real strange because um, nobody was attacking anybody. And you could see as you watched, the deal was, boys, this is a major catastrophe, and, if, and let's have some reason here. And, um, and you could see, I believe I could feel it. The deal was, if nobody ate anybody, this water would go down sometime, and we can get back off here and go to our, our lives. And, um, I thought the world was in a in a divided place back then, and I've kept going back every time it floods like that. They do the same thing, and it gives me a a great faith in something to work out. You know, I think we got to realize we're in a bad mind right now, and don't shoot one another, and we might we'll get through this. Thing. And uh, I'm hopeful of that. And that, that's what I love about that river. It, it gives me um, hope and um, gives me faith that it'll work out, you know. Maybe not all of us will make it, but a lot of us will. And um, who knows, it might get better and better, you know. You might decide to explore Choctahatchee River for the jungle, or the fishing, or the wildlife or the clear water springs. Or maybe you just want to ride along to hear some great stories. But if you're lucky enough, maybe, just maybe, you'll leave this adventure with a few stories of your own. <laughs>